Burke's parrot was named by Thomas Mitchell, the famous Australian explorer, the same person who the beautiful Major Mitchell cockatoo was named after. The specimen came from the Bogan River area. So this small parrot was named in honour of Richard Burke. Richard was the governor of New South Wales for a six year period from 1831. It is a small parrot, slightly bigger than a budgerigar, and like most parrots, breeds in tree hollows and is a grass seed eater. With its flight, it tends to fly through the canopy more than over it. They live in the drier, arid areas of Australia, where there is acacia scrub. So their habitat goes from western New South Wales and Queensland, through the centre of Australia, over to the dry centre of Western Australia. The genus to which the Burke's parrots belong is Neosophotus. It is the only species of this genus, and on a DNA cladogram is closely related to Neophema, or the small grassed parrots, such as the elegant parrot as shown in the insert. Burke's parrot has sexual dimorphism. The male has more intense colours. This bird is a female or a juvenile male. For an adult male, look for blue above the series. Burke's parrot is mostly a dry seed eater. I say this because I personally have never seen it eating green grass seed. But I suspect when the rains come, these birds will eat green seed. They also seem to have an ability to go well without water, typical of birds living in arid zones. Eating dried grass seed and having to feed the young when they are in breeding mode, they do need to get a good supply of water. So many of these shots, you will notice, have been taken at water holes, photographing these birds on the ground. I find rather difficult as they are very cautious. Also their tweet call is very soft. Being a little tone deaf I found it very hard to find these birds in the native environment. A few years ago birding with Mike Gilpin after finding a grey falcon he told me to listen to the cheer up, a very small soft call that these birds make. Once identified they are so much easier to find. Well, I hope you heard the calls above the wind. Neosavotus burkei, or Burke's parrot, is a group bird like most parrots. I have only ever seen up to eight birds in a small group, but some people say that in the Northern Territory, at dams, there can be groups of going up to 30 or 40 birds. In Mitchell's day, when he reported these birds, they were never seen in large groups. It is believed that their numbers have increased due to subartesian watering points over the central arid areas of Australia. Coming back to Mitchell, he didn't report large numbers of Burke parrots. He only really reported the one bird that became a specimen to the museum. He also reported on the leadbeater cockatoo. The common name of this cockatoo is now the Major Mitchell in honour of him. At the Burke campsite, Mitchell noticed that the leadbetters were flying over in small numbers, and I suspect the numbers that he saw are much the same as what we see today. And though some people say the numbers have diminished, I suspect it is much the same historically as seen in the 1830s.
colour of the feathers of birds, like many other animals, is determined by the ratio of melanin and coloured pigments, in particular the carotenoids. Sometimes the binding of the coloured pigments and melanin goes astray, and the melanin or dark pigments are lost. This leads to either albinism or leukism. In albinism, it's a total phenomena. In leukism, there is just the failure of melanin to be bound so that other colours can come through. And that's what's happened to this bird. This is a Burke's parrot, and as you can see, there are very soft colours, but no dark colours. This is a leukistic Burke's parrot. Here now is a rather sad story. This bird is sitting with its back facing towards us. It's a Burke's parrot, and up in the tree above, there is a male. He's flown down to the female. The female is not moving around. She is lethargic. The male keeps allopreening around the head. The female is not responding. She is inert, not returning the allopreening. I returned a little later on the same day, and the situation with the female had deteriorated. The male was going around in a rather disquieted manner. As you know, these birds mate for life. So the mate is trying to get this bird to move. She is rather despondent. As she moved forward, you may see that this bird, the female, has a distended abdomen. She is egg-bound with a bowel obstruction. Unless she gets into the air, the distended cloaca will be the point where ants attack. In egg-bound birds, sexual activity can trigger cloacal contractions and the egg can come away as long as it is in the right direction. The most common cause for a cloacal obstruction like this in an egg-bound female is the lie of the egg being transverse. But you can see the male mounts her, unfortunately with no result. She is in too much pain with peritonitis. She cannot fly. The next hour came back. The female is now more lethargic than ever. But there's the male again, coming back to visit his mate for life. In a last attempt to get her to fly, he can see the ants starting to swarm. I regret to say that this story is so sad. The next morning there was a corpse just covered in ants and the male kept coming back. Another potential threat for a Burke's parrot can be seen on this picture. This happy little Burke's parrot is singing away at the top of a dead stick over a water point. It appears to be quite healthy and happy. It's either an immature or a female bird because it lacks the bluish coloration over the nasal bridge. But let's look a little closer. If we zoom in, we can see that this bird has a tick. But we're not too sure of any arboviral or bacterial disease being carried by ticks that affects birds. And I suspect that this tick will probably disappear very soon for it hasn't locked in onto the skin. It's only sitting on the feathers and a little bit of preening or allo preening by its mate will probably get rid of the tick without further consequence. But if left and moved up toward the eye and there attached to the skin, the bird will refuse to let its mate allo preen for it is too sensitive around the eye. The eye will become inflamed, the cornea dry, the nictating membrane not functional and the bird can lose an eye. On behalf of Plumes of Oz, I would like to thank you for watching this video and if you would like to subscribe, you would then be notified of future releases.